What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Live with Brandon Blakeney podcast. I am your host, Brandon Blakeney, a.k.a. Brandon Lee TV. You know I got another banger for you, so kick back, relax, and come take a ride with me. You are now locked into the Live with Brandon Blakeney podcast. Here is your host, Brandon Blakeney. Y'all, it has been a tough run for the Chicago Sky since the Olympic break ended, man. They are 1-5 in in the month of August since the break ended and the season started back. They just lost a heartbreaker on a buzzer beater to the Las Vegas Aces after Kennedy Carter made an incredible incredible shot off the cross looking very AI-ish hit the three to tie the game at 75 (sighs) the aces two-time defending champs throw the lob Asia Wilson you know the rest puts the dagger in the young Chicago sky and sends them packing now Angel Reese continues to break records and Camila Cardosa continues to improve and play her best basketball of the year. Their two rookies are shining. Kennedy Carter is getting back in her bag what she was doing before the break, but it has not been enough, man, and the Sky are barely holding on to that eighth place spot right now. If the Atlanta Dream beat the Fever, they will take over that eighth spot, man, from the Chicago Sky, that final playoff spot. We're getting the crunch time. Every game is counting so much more as we get into the break. But Angel Reese, man, we got to give it to her. She's a generational rebounder. She may be the best rebounder in the history of women's basketball, bro. Three straight 20 rebound games. She just broke another record. She ties Tina Charles for most double-doubles for a rookie with 22. Angel Reese has been incredible and looking at just her overall impact, I know the first thing that's going to be mentioned is the field goal percentage, which has been horrible. I love that she's extended her range. She's shooting the basketball from two from deep, from three, from the perimeter, making shots, and it's becoming more of a reliability and defenses are having respect, not sagging off of her and leaving her wide open like they do Ben Simmons. But, I mean, we did see her get four rebounds on one possession, and a lot of the critics are saying, you know, a lot of the rebounds that she's getting are being overblown, inflated, you might say, because she's getting her own missed shots. A rebound is a rebound, though. I'm here to say that. But looking at the numbers a little bit, Angel's last three games, she has 62 rebounds, y'all. I don't care who you are. That is insane. 11 points, 22 rebounds, 13 points, 20 rebounds, and 19 points with 20 rebounds. Her last three games, and I agree with the tweet, This is not normal, but we would be remiss not to mention. Now, she did go 8 of 16 and got 10 offensive rebounds off those shots. She went 3 of 12 the game before and got 7 offensive rebounds. And then it gets pretty bad. You know, 3 for 12, 4 for 16, 10 offensive rebounds. So, uh, uh, you know, almost half her rebounds in these last three games are coming off her own misses. That is the thing, man. She is not an elite finisher around the rim, and that is something that is holding her back. We have to, we talk about Caitlin Clark's turnovers, we have to talk about Angel Reese's missed shots. But she is relentless on that glass, and you got to respect the hustle, the energy, the tenacity, man. You know, she's this model celebrity off the court, but in them trenches, she is a straight dog. And she's, nobody can keep her off the glass. Nobody has. She's led the league in rebounding for a good part of the season. She's had a really good year. And I think when we, as, as a culture in hoops, we talk about it's not all about scoring. Well, then rebounds have to hold some serious weight in this Rookie of the Year race. I definitely absolutely think it's still Caitlin's uh, award to lose. But Angel Reese is doing enough to keep herself in the conversation. On the year, Angel is averaging 13.6 points per game. Her points have continued to improve. She's also averaging 12.6 rebounds, 1.8 assists, and 1.3 steals. Now, the wins are not coming, but the development of her as well as the way Camila Cardosa is playing as well, like we see the future is bright, and every move they make moving forward needs to be built around re-signing Kennedy Carter and providing shooting and 
point guard, a true playmaker around this big three, man, because they have the scoring. They have the defense. They are an elite rebounding team. Camilla, Killer Camilla has played incredible basketball the second half of this season so far. Like, she's really turned it on. Although they have all but one game have been losses, in their last five games, Camilla had eight points, 12 rebounds, three assists, and five blocks this most recent game against the Aces, holding her own. She had 18 points, six rebounds, two assists, and one steal the game before. 12, four, and two the game before that. Another double-double, 15 points, 14 rebounds, 3 assists, 1 steal, and 2 blocks in the only game they've won. And then, of course, 10, 5, 2, 1 block in the game, their first game back after the break. So they are 1-4. I think I said 1-5 earlier. 1-4. So the wins definitely aren't coming, and it absolutely may be time to continue to blow this whole thing open. Um, I thought it was a huge, huge, major mistake that they traded Marina Mabry. It made no sense. And Ben Ham has been solid so far, but very inconsistent. She's not the shooter, the volume shooter. Um, the she, I will say Mabry streaky, streaky and has been inconsistent, but not as much as Ben. Like, the upside is just not there. And we see what Mabry's out there doing in Connecticut, killing it. Um, Lindsey Allen has been solid at the point guard position. She hasn't been consistent, but she's been their best option so far. You know, Dana Evans not really giving them much. She's more of a scorer, not a point guard. They don't really truly have a one. They don't really have an elite pick and roll player right now that can initiate the offense for others. And that's killing them. That is stagnating their offense. I think it's time for them to make some moves. I think they have to definitely hit a home run in the draft. We know they got a first-round pick back from trading Mabry, but they got to hit a home run. They need a point guard desperately. Probably not going to be Paige Beckers, but holy Georgia Amore, Sonia Citron, Olivia Miles, somebody. The Sky need a point guard, man. But it's not all bad. It's not all bad. They, I, I do think they have a solid foundation. They have a franchise that is believing and investing in them in a city with the new practice facility upgrade in those facilities, which is a big reason why they lost Kalia Copper and Marina Mabry. Now you expect them to be able to not only attract big-time free agents, potentially, so Bali going to be a free agent, DJ Carrington would be an elite fit with this group. Like, they're going to have a chance to land free agents now that want to play with Angel, that want to play with Camilla, that want to play under a great coach in Teresa Witherspoon, man. So I think the future is extremely bright, but it's not right now. The Sky, man, they need to go ahead and pack it up. No disrespect, but I think tanking would not be a bad idea. It may actually be in their best interest because I don't think they're better than Atlanta. They're hanging with the Washington Mystics, but they're not a playoff team. They're not going to compete. And if by the grace of God they did go ahead and make the playoffs, they would not be making any noise. It would be a swift. I don't even see them winning a playoff game. It would be a swift exit. I think the best thing to do right now for them is to re-sign Kennedy Carter, do some damage in free agency, and hit a home run in the draft. Start scouting these players early uh, during this, this summer. Uh, for the draft, man, because they're a few pieces away. But it is promising seeing what Angel Reese is doing. It's promising seeing what Camilla is doing. Like, they're arguably going to be a force. They have the potential to be the best front court in the league in a few years' time. I'm excited for the development. We've been crucial. We've been very crucial towards Cardosa and her development and just the lack of production early in the season. A, a switch is flipped, and I don't think, you know, they have to trade or choose between Angel or Camilla. These two can arguably play together. We're seeing the floor open up more as Angel continues to make shots. We're seeing spacing not being an issue. We're seeing the playmaking ability of both being able to move the basketball and make plays. Capable passers out of the post. Both need a go-to move. That's going to be the next step. And whoever is working with Aaliyah Boston, y'all, needs to be working with Cardosa as well on her footwork because Boston is elite in the post on that block right now. So she needs to share some tips, share the trainer, do something. I'm just saying. But, yeah, man, this is not the year for the sky. There's no shame in it. Nobody, I think they're better than a lot of people expected. 
basically an entire new roster, not too many years removed from a title, so fans do have high expectations, but give them time, let these rookies continue to build, Angel Reese has been way better than advertised, and she is going to be one of the most popular athletes, I think, to ever play in that city, to be honest with y'all, um, but yeah, just through the rest of the season, go ahead, tank that thing, you know, these, these I mean, you know, you, you need to be trying to get a high draft pick. They, they need to go ahead and get a point guard and stop playing. And it will also accelerate the development of these bigs having a capable passer to feed them the basketball. We see what Indiana is doing with Caitlin Clark, how she's helped Boston, how she's helped Alyssa Smith, uh, Katie, Katie Lou Samuelson, and the list goes on with these forwards. So, Point guard makes all the difference. They need somebody that can initiate the offense. This was a heck of a game, though. This was a game of the year candidate. This team plays defense. They're scrappy. They fight hard. And they really make you earn it, and they're physical. So I, I love the foundation that's being built. And let's just keep, give them time to keep nurturing that talent, that young core, and adding to that nucleus. But y'all let me know how y'all feel, man. Is Angel Reese the best rebounder we've seen in the game? Are her missed shots overshadowing the rebounds? Should she get credit for that? Y'all let me know. Holler at me in the comments. And wherever y'all feel the Rookie of the Year race is. Because Rakia Jackson has got something to say as well. Y'all let me know in the comments. Holler at me there. That's a wrap for us. For all the latest and the greatest, join our memberships. We got that exclusive content coming daily, weekly, whenever you need it. Until next time, we out.